Hello everyone! In this video we will discuss the Adobe Creative Cloud, specifically how to download or install the Creative Cloud apps, as well as how to get started working quickly. In my previous YouTube video, I discussed how to create an Adobe ID, which is an essential step to subscribing as well as choosing the appropriate plans offered by Adobe. If you do not have an Adobe ID just yet, I'd recommend that you watch that video first so that you are up to speed. In short, to create an Adobe ID, all you really need to do is open your browser, type in adobe.com, like so, navigate to the top right corner and click on the sign in button. From this window, instead of signing in, click on Get Adobe ID, fill out the correct information, after which Adobe will send you a welcoming email and ask you to verify your email account. After you have verified your account, you can head back to adobe.com and click Sign In. The Creative Cloud is a collection of software created by Adobe and it includes more than 20 fully functioning applications as well as mobile applications. Um, it's a tool that will allow you to download and install as well as use the Creative Cloud applications at any point. Um, it's a subscription-based service, um, which in contrast to the traditional perpetual license model, it provides software to users on subscription basis. Um, as a Creative Cloud subscriber, you are given storage on the Adobe servers. Um, it can range anything from 25 gigabytes to about 100 um, or even more and that really depends on the, the uh, pricing plan that you have with them. Um, anything that you store on the uh, Creative Cloud files, you can share, collaborate with other users, um, and it really is a wonderful source to obtain all of your materials at any time, um, in any point. Um, I sort of like treat it as a Dropbox folder, um, it's wonderful. One really important thing to note um, here is that it doesn't matter what you have heard, the Adobe Creative Cloud is basically a software that will uh, run from the cloud. Um, so the software is downloaded uh, from the cloud because it provides everyone easy access to the installers. Um, and, but the software itself lives on your computer, just like any other software that you might be working with. Um, the Creative Cloud doesn't require you to be connected to the internet in order to use the software, um, if that makes sense. You can work uh, on a remote island if you'd like and your Creative Cloud applications will run just fine. So to get started on installing or downloading the apps you're interested in working with, go ahead and um, use that Adobe ID we just created by clicking right here on the sign in button. Go ahead and sign in. Once you sign in, this is what the um, platform might look like. This is where you can manage your account, your payments, your plans. This is the Creative Cloud where you can download more apps or um, view the work you have saved. And this is the Document Cloud where you can do pretty much the same thing, download apps and view the files you have saved. To get started working on the download process, we're gonna make our way up here to the creativity and design section. Click on that. At the very bottom where it says view all products, go ahead and choose that option. And from this window, the first thing I'd like you to do is to download the Creative Cloud um, app. This is like your 24 seven virtual employee that is going to help you download and install everything else that you're interested in. Go ahead and click on download. The file that you have downloaded might show in your browser. If you have, if you're using Safari, it might show at a very top portion or within your download section. Go ahead and click on the Creative Cloud installer. Double tap to open the installer and run the software. You may have noticed that after you have installed the Creative Cloud app, that it has hosted itself up here at the very top menu or you may need to search for it by typing in your search button Adobe Creative Cloud. From the Creative Cloud app, go ahead and navigate to the top menu right here. And if you're not already signed in, be sure to sign in. Next, make your way to the apps menu and you will see all of the apps that are available to you for download. Simply go ahead and click on the app you'd like to either update, install, or launch. If you click on this drop down menu, you will see that you can view tutorials related to Adobe Photoshop or tutorials related to Adobe Illustrator. 
You could also manage the versions you have already installed. There is another section up here at the very top where it says learn, where you can uh, learn new skills or review videos that might be of help to you. After you have installed the apps you're interested in using, go ahead and click open. After you have opened the app you're interested in using, the easiest way to access it is to right click on the app, navigate to the options menu and just keep it on your dock. You can do the same thing for PCs by, click, by right clicking on the app and where it says pin to taskbar, selecting that option. Another way to install these apps is to make your way back to the adobe.com page Navigate your way down to the View All Products section. After you have installed the Creative Cloud app, you can navigate to any other apps you're interested in installing by simply clicking on the Download button. At times, you might be asked by Adobe to indicate or provide some more information about your um, skills. Click on Continue. After you have successfully downloaded all of your programs, be sure to save them on your dock or pin them to your taskbar and begin working. Personally, I believe it's very helpful to set up a unique workspace and to do that, I'm going to have you click on the create new. It doesn't matter if you're using Illustrator or Photoshop, the preview will be pretty much the same. Navigate to the top menu and select the areas that you're interested in working with, whether that's mobile, web or print, film video or art and illustration. I'm going to go ahead and choose print. You can view all the presets and just choose one of these options right here. You can enter more information or add more specification and then clicking on create. You can notice how organized my workspace looks like and this is what I'd like to help you achieve as well. If this is your first time opening your Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator uh, program, your dashboard might look a little different. For instance, on mine, the control panel is completely missing. To load the control panel, I'm going to make my way to the Windows menu. And right here where it says control, I'm going to select that option. And here is my control panel. In order to create your own fashion workspace, you need to know how to add and subtract to this panel dock area. For instance, if you are not interested in using the libraries, you can simply click and drag to remove them from the dock like so and if you'd like to add any other options make your way to the windows menu these are all alphabetically listed go ahead and select everything you're interested in for instance color and color guide you could again collapse the icons or expand the icons by clicking on this little double arrow and by clicking on the x you're going to x out of this option and remove them from the dock. By going to the Windows menu right here, you can achieve the opposite effect, which is to add any uh, panel dock options that you would like. For instance, I'd like to add the color and the color guide. And by clicking and dragging, you will notice that a blue line will show up. And this blue line will indicate where these apps will be hosted. For instance, Currently, they are going to be hosted under the layers, but if I were to move a little bit up, um, I could host them with the layers or at the very top. If there is a single blue line, I could host them on their own, which is what I'd like to achieve. Therefore, I'm going to release. Moving on, I could add more of these options that I'm interested in. I'm going to host them right underneath the color and the color guides, dragging on this line right here in the middle you could certainly increase or decrease the width of this panel menu. In order to save everything you have just arranged the way it is, so that every single time you log in, you always see the same exact view, we're going to make our way up here at the very top where it says Essentials. And as you can see, I already have a fashion workspace uh, created. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click down here where it says New Workspace. I'm gonna give it a name. It can be any name you'd like and click OK. After you have created your fashion workspace, if you ever log in and the view is just a little unfamiliar, for example, it looks a little like this, or, or it might be reverted back to the essentials menu, um, all you really need to do is click back on the essentials, find your fashion workspace, click on the fashion workspace, and this is what we just set up. 
if your fashion workspace is a little bit out of the ordinary. For example, you have certain sections being taken out and it just looks a little weird. All you need to do is click back on the fashion workspace and just click reset fashion workspace. It'll go back to its original form. Okay, thank you for watching.